make your computer. How about your lab access? Hmm. Lab access? Have you told? Yeah. Most of them? Or I all of them? I finished it. Finished. Oh, good. That's very good. We have the lab exercises and then we have to do extra, right? Or because I think all the lab, if we do all the labs, do we just do like 60%? 60%? That, that's what the coursework sheet said? No, 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 no. no. If you have done all the exercises, you should get uh, uh, 100 so. okay. And also, oh, where's my slides? Oh, sorry, I put all these slides on the computer. I can't find it. Lab access uh, coursework, and if you go to marks, you can see so if you have to all of them, get to 100%. Actually, this 100% is for 20% in the final marks. But those point number three and four are not in the lab sheets, right? Yes, they are related to the uh, uh, lab sheets here from lab one to uh, uh, lab eight. And yeah, so and uh, from week two to week uh, ten, uh, nine actually. They they uh, week ten is for the coursework uh, completion. back to use my flash memory. Sorry, it's so all the file I copied onto a computer just disappeared. Just go use this for, for, for lecture. Um,
I think this is all the point processing and uh, filtering has been done so far. And uh, uh, filtering, we, we learn how to uh, use uh, masks, filters to um, reduce so for smoothing or to find the edges. And to find the edges, we can use some filters um, so coming from uh, uh, gradients, uh, uh, partial differentiation, and also the second partial di uh, di differentiation. And so uh, we call that Laplace or filter. Uh, and also we learned uh, how to connect legs to find the boundaries such that we can uh, segment the, the object. And also, we talked about uh, thresholding. Thresholding is to just find uh, the object in the image. And uh, last week, I also gave you some, uh, um, uh, some, some uh, uh, just one or about uh, Fourier transform. It's, uh, it's uh, just give you some uh, um, idea about what uh, it uh, represents in in the frequency domain. And uh, actually, a lot of filters can be done mathematically. And also, we can do design the filters in the frequency domain. That's uh, what we, we, we did with uh, signal processing. It's uh, the same thing. Uh, this is about the lab, but for the ROI part, where you select an ROI using some kind of image you've made. Uh, mm. From what I've messed with it, it doesn't seem like the program will display if it's transparent or mm. not. So, do oh, you need to fix that somehow? Or do you mean the RF channel did, did, did not work? Yeah, like if you if you display an image and you run some function through it that yeah. sets all the alpha values to literally anything, it doesn't change it, whether oh, possibly. it's like <coughs> 255, like any value doesn't. Possibly it's change. related to the library because uh, uh, the, uh, it's used, uh, the, the, the you know, red, green, blue RF channels provided with, uh, with uh, the, the uh, environment, the, the, the uh, Java image, uh, image functions. Um, there should be some parameter to set it to, to, to make it work, but uh, I have to uh, find it on a web later. Okay. Uh, I should be. So it's something about the program rendering it? Yes, yes, I think you, 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 you should be able to use it, but how to use it, we can try to find out on the web later. Okay. Okay, just talking about the lectures, uh, because uh, we are stuck. Starting to talk about a new topic, and uh, um, for for uh, for filters, we previously designed uh, or talked about some uh, smooth filters. Those smooth filters is, uh, about um, uh, blurring or smoothing of the images, and today we. We will talk about image restoration. Image restoration is for uh, images with some noise in that. So we, we also talked about the field. We use smooth filters uh, such that or weighted mean filter, box filter, weighted mean filter. We can also use uh, medium filter, other static filters. Those filters we can be used to remove or reduce noise. And also for for image restoration, we were talked about uh, the noise models. The models are just uh, uh, came from the the electronic noise uh, from Phoenix, and also we have the uh, the salt and pepper noise. How uh, how we can use some filter to reduce that. So today's lecture actually is uh, is not new. Completely new. It's related to smoothing, smoothing or medium filter. But we will talk about uh, the models of noise. 
Okay, so uh, for for the the uh, image processing, we know uh, we can have uh, image enhancement. Enhancement just make the image uh, better, and, and and it's very um, dependent on applications. It depends on what applications you 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 you, you need, and uh, image enhancement is uh, very subjective because. Uh, uh, different uh, applications may need uh, different uh, enhancement methods and the results. So we, we just need to try. Uh, if you have some experience, you know uh, what uh, filter or what method you can use, and also uh, about the parameters for the filter system. And uh, for restoration, remove noise or reduce the noise, it's very objective. So we can use some measurements to calculate if it's good or bad. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a, based on some uh, degradation of images. If we have a, this is a, just a general model about degradation and restoration. If we have the, some I ideal image without any noise, this is what we wish. But actually when, when we take pictures, the electronic device always generates noise and also the light goes into the optical uh, uh, system and then goes to the, 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 the imaging, uh, imaging uh, uh, the photo perception, perceptors. And uh, for those sensors always generate noise and also have some degradation. This is coming from the optical system and also electronic devices. So at this position actually the these are what the real image we can have. We have the images here. This is what we, we wish to reconstruct or restore. And this process is for restoration because the degradation model is built with the optical system and the noise just estimated from, from the image. So those are not exactly the same as uh, physics but, or optics, but we can just approximate uh, such that we can remove or reduce those, this process for the restoration and we can find the image. That image should be very close to the, the ideal image, what we wish to have, the, the perfect image. This is a restored image, and here's the image. If we uh, are represented in the formula, we can see the uh, degradation, the optical system, the focus, the focus, in focus, or, or, or auto focus, we can just use uh, some, some, uh, some uh, uh, it's called uh, um, modulation function. Use that to do that. So, uh, in, in special domain, it's the convolution with the perfect image, and also plus some noise here. So this is the formula for, for that, it's in, in special domain. And what we wish to apply some restoration method to reconstruct that, okay? And if we, uh, apply Fourier transform to that formula. We have uh, a Fourier transform of this. This is uh, the spectrum of the image we have. This is the perfect image we wish to generate. This is uh, the uh, transfer function in the optical system. And here is the noise. So this is a convolution. After Fourier transform, it becomes multiplication. And here, addition is still addition. And what we wish to generate the corresponding different. So this is, uh, this is just mathematics, but uh, we can, you know, this is a general model of all the methods for research or anything, we, we use the same formula, but it's just a different noise or different uh, functions there. These are related to uh, the optics and also the sensors, and this is related to the electronic devices. Okay, for noise models, 
uh, uh, noise is uh, generally coming from uh, the, uh, the, the uh, electronic devices uh, and also uh, you know, we, when we convert from analog to digital, analog to the digital sort of converter, the, those devices always generate some uh, quantization error. A quantization error is also noise. So it's uh, coming from a digitization. And uh, also, uh, we can have uh, different uh, uh, noises. We, we call it noises. But uh, noises can be different types. White noise is one of them. White noise, we call that white, is not, not just white. Uh, uh, actually, for color images, we also can have uh, color, for colors, we can have white noise. White noise is that word, that term coming from the Fourier transform of the noise is flat in the frequency domain. So we, 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 we call that white noise. Uh, in signal processing, uh, especially in audio uh, signal processing, we, we also have uh, uh, some terms named colored noise. Color noise, and uh, because they, we call that color, it's, it's not, you know, in, in, in signal processing, it's not exactly related to color, but it's related to the uh, uh, Fourier transform frequency domain, the spectrum. If we, we, we call the colored noise, it can be blue. Blue means it's, it's very high frequency, uh, frequency uh, noise. And uh, brown noise, browning noise, it's uh, just low frequency. And the green noise is uh, in the middle. So it's just some, some, some terms uh, we used. What do you mean transition? Transmission, sorry. <coughs> uh, James, also the noise. Where? Transmission. Yeah. Transmission. It's a signal transmission. Uh, 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 you know, so for wireless, wide communication, we, we transmit. We always we have noise. And uh, in we will talk about uh, image coding. In image coding, we will have uh, uh, one thing called channel coding. Channel coding is is to make the, 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 the uh, code into different data such that in the received data, we can find the noise, the error, and the corrected error. So we can have some correction, error correction code. That's another thing. We will talk about that later, next week or two weeks later. OK, it's so, uh, about noise. We're talking about no white noise and colored noise. And for noises, uh, uh, we, we, we just assume all the noise, the points should be independent of the spatial coordinates. And uh, uh, for independent, we mean if we just fix the camera and take a picture, everything is fixed, everything is the same. But if we take different pictures, every picture should have different noise. The noise should be different. So at every point, the noise should be different. That's why we can some, some, uh, 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 some images of the same camera and then find the mean to reduce the noise because noise are independent. Uh, it's independent of spatial coordinates, but sometimes we may have some periodical noise. Periodic noise, noise appear in the image look look like uh, some uh, periodic patterns, and if you can see some periodic patterns, actually you, you can reduce uh, reduce or remove that uh, by some 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 uh, frequency removal from uh, uh, in the frequency storm. We will talk about later. Okay. For uh, noise probability, uh, we may have some. Uh, this is uh, in the spatial domain. This is uh, not uh, uh, in the frequency domain. If we if we uh, 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 transform apply for transform to image, we have the frequency domain, the spectrum. But this is uh, defined in the in the spatial domain. 
it can be white noise. White noise means the frequency domain, the spectrum is flat. But in a special domain, the data, the, the noise uh, intensities can be different. The distribution of the intensities can be Gaussian, just in the middle. And if we talked about uh, uh, some, some noise uh, in added to image, the added value can be distributed from, uh, uh, from uh, left to right, or from negative to positive. positive. The middle should be zero, so it depends. And uh, if you you have such distribution, it's called Gaussian noise. For images, uh, for digital cameras, mainly most noise is, uh, is can be modeled with uh, Gaussian noise the distribution, like Gaussian. Sometimes we also have some uh, some uh, really gamma or exponential noises but not very popular to use. And sometimes we have the uniform. We can have, a, you know, so, so we talk about white noise. But white noise can be Gaussian white noise, or uniform noise, or other distribution white noise. This is in the special domain. And also, so we, we can have the noise like this. We only have two values. One value is very dark, one value is very bright. So this bright values look like uh, salt, dark values look like pepper. So such noise is actually like uh, uh, salt and pepper noise. It, even we have two values, zero or one, or minimum or maximum. Even we have uh, just two values for the noise. In the frequency domain, we can still have a flat or almost flat uh, spectrum. So, for salt and pepper noise, we can still have white noise. White noise, color of noise is just like a frequency term, but this is a distribution is in the spatial domain. Okay, here's the formulas. The formulas coming from mathematics. Those are the functions. The distribution. This is a distribution like a, we 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 talking about distribution. A is just like the uh, uh, PDF probability density function. PDF is similar to what we have learned. Normalized histogram. If we just take out all the noise, if it's, uh, the distribution is Gaussian, that means the histogram of noise that is, is Gaussian. So it's uh, actually histogram. The Gaussian and binomial are the same? Sorry? Gaussian and bi binomial. Binomial I and Gaussian seems to be the same. No, 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 not the same. Gaussian and, uh, and uh, binomial. Bi binomial. Sorry? Binomial. Binomial distribution. Binomial? Yeah. yeah. But it's not the same thing. What, what, what's <coughs> binomial? In probability and statistics. There are different kinds of distribution like poison and, uh, I mean, Poisson and. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, should not be uh, the same Gaussian is Gaussian. Okay, sorry, just from the shape. Maybe similar. You can see this uh, really is also similar, but this this side is uh, this okay. bit, uh, you know, it's uh, not symmetric, but this is symmetric. This is just probability. If you use some special domain. That's actually a lot. And, and another um, probability is called Laplace or something, noise. Also used in image processing. OK, here's the examples in images. And if we have an image just like uh, uh, three levels, so very dark, very bright, and 
some GUI uh, uh, pixel values between. And if we you just uh, 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 you know intentionally add some noise into into the image, if we add uh, a ghostly noise, we, we, the image should like look like this. And if we have a really noise, gamma noise, this image should look like this. So this will just give you some impression what uh, the noise look like in images. Okay, here's uh, uh, other three type of noise. This is a, this is a sort of paper noise. We can see some very black uh, or dark pixels or bright pixels. And here's a uniform distribution. It's, a, it's a, just a terms for the distribution of some noise values. We, we, we just talked about the uh, noise, the white noise. Those are all white noise. But sometimes we can also have some color noise with, uh, uh, with uh, certain paper and also uniform uh, gaussian. And uh, here's a color image. Randomly, we have 50% uh, this uh, uniform distribution. Uh, this random should be gaussian noise. And here's just uh, the original image without noise. So you can see it's, uh, the noise in the image. For such color images, we have the color of the pixel values. But the color of the uh, noise is uh, in the special uh, frequency domain. Any questions? OK, it's a theoretical noise. It's, uh, Especially dependent, you can see in this image we have some patterns, some of some horizontal uh, vertical lines, and those lines, if we uh, if we uh, find the Fourier transform of that image, we, we may have some some high values at some points. Those high value points actually give us the frequencies of those patterns. Okay, this is a periodical noise. If we can remove those points, we can actually remove the periodical noise in that image. Or we can remove all others, just take out those, those points, we can actually extract the noise pattern in the image. Any questions? And also, uh, in last week, we, uh, we, we talked about the effects of the, the properties of Fourier transform. If the image is just real numbers without any imaginary part, if there's real numbers, the real image, the Fourier tra transform of the real image should be symmetric, centrally symmetric. If we have one point there, there should be another point. If we have one point there, there should be another up uh, here, and this one's there. So this is centrally symmetric. We have a center here, or we call that point uh, symmetry. Okay, uh, for. Uh, Noise, we can actually have some statistical um, parameters. And we can find the mean of the, the uh, noise and uh, uh, variance of the noise or standard deviation. The mean is the same as we used, the formula is the same as we used in the uh, normalized histogram. This is normalized histogram or the PDF of the density function. This uh, uh, pixel value, pixel value times the the uh, probability density for that pixel, and the sum of them is the mean. And this is a uh, 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 use uh, the normalized histogram. And you can also just uh, find that by using the, the noise pattern only. And you can you can, you can sum all the uh, noise uh, data and divide by the number of pixels. 
But so you can only do this in periodic noise filtering. You can't, you can't do that. No, 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 not periodic any, 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 any noise. If you can extract all the noise, you can use this to find the noise. And actually, actually, in image processing, if we just have one image, if we just have one image without any reference signals for, for the image model, we know we, there should be some perfect image. But when you have got the image, you don't know the perfect image. You can only ex estimate. For this example here, you can see some, some, some uh, high value points here. Those should be, should be noise because other uh, 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 positions you don't have that high value. So you can definitely follow those points as, uh, as noise. And also for other, other things, when you wish to find the noise model, actually you can find a very smooth error. In the smooth error, it should be, there should be only noise, then you can estimate the noise. There are a lot of methods to, to, to estimate the noise, because, uh, because generally, generally, pictures, we, mostly we have the picture uh, in the fructal domain, the picture uh, information is distributed in a low frequency. Most energy is in a low frequency. All the high frequency should be noise. Any more questions? Okay. We have the formula here. It's uh, uh, if we, we if we can use some filtering, we can we can remove or reduce that. And also, if we just consider the image, the model, we have noise only. If we don't consider those, the optical. Uh, transmission function, we can, we can just use uh, the, uh, the noise model to, to reduce that. And to reduce uh, uh, noise, we can use filters, like mean filters. We have talked about the arithmetic mean, just to use, uh, use some pixel values added together to divide uh, by the number of pixels. It's a uh, 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 mean filter, actually it's uh, the box filter just in the box. And uh, uh, in mathematics, actually, if we find the mean, if we find the mean, it's not just an arithmetic mean. We can have some other means. This is geometric mean. Geometric mean is you multiply all the values together and use uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the uh, root power root to find so this is a uh, geometric mean. And also we can have a harmonic mean. This is the formula. And also so the, the contra uh, harmonic means. Uh, different mean functions we can use for the mean. And also in, uh, um, in previous slides about future, when we talked about the weighted mean. Weighted mean is not just one. This should be some weights multiplied to the image and find the mean. So this is a mean filter. Mean filter, uh, those mean filters are based on the uh, means, the definition means uh, in mathematics. We have uh, uh, even more means in mathematics, so we can use those for, for uh, image processing. But uh, those uh, have uh, uh, sometimes it's good for some noise, sometimes it's uh, good for others, uh, for harmonic mean filters, uh, good for certain, uh, certain noise, but uh, not good for paper noise. And uh, this is uh, sharper than arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and ultra, uh, uh, contra, contra harmonic mean, so we can use uh, the uh, parameter Q to, to, to make it, because it's uh, um, a generalized version of uh, other means. Do you know this is a, 
the Jamaica mean actually also another version of arithmetic mean. If we if we use logarithm function, if we use logarithm function applied to this, we can we can find this can be multiplied can be here, and this uh, uh, multiplication can be converted to uh, okay this and, and uh, log this should be sigma and t is t. So we can convert this multiplication into uh, addition. So if you look at here, it actually is very similar to this and here just log this. So, so if we just take logarithm to every pixel value, and this is uh, arithmetic mean, that's the geometry mean. So they are related. If you use mathematics, actually, all of them are related. You can, you can find the relations between them. And the rest as well? The other two as well? All together this is the generalized version of that and so Depends on what Q you use. If Q is zero, that's I guess, but if Q is a minus one, what is Q again? Q is parameter. You can set, you can set to other numbers. This is a generalized version. Why would you take a lot of the arithmetic mean if you did that on the board? If you yeah, why why did you do that for the arithmetic one? If we put put log there, we actually can convert that into geometric mean. It's just a relationship between the arithmetic mean and geometric mean. So if you log a sum, it goes back to a product. So if you log applied to all the pixel values, if and if you found the arithmetic mean, it's actually the same as you found the geometric. No more questions? This is just mathematics. And all the means actually come in, uh, uh, came from uh, mathematics. And we talked about the, uh, the, the weighted filter or Gaussian filter. Those means actually come in from uh, uh, signal processing. These are pure mathematics. And also, you know, so, uh, the weighted mean or Gaussian filter. Those actually is also part of mean filter. No questions? Okay, here are some examples about the image. This is the intentionally just add some uh, some uh, uh, noise into the image, and then using this uh, uh, Gaussian noise added to the image, we can see some noise in there. And if we use a rest of everything, there's a just box filter, the after mean uh, filter, so uh, we can see it's, uh, the noise is uh, just spread into the neighborhood. It's not removed, but reduced. And here's the geometric mean filter applied to that image. This noise is still spread into neighborhood because uh, we use a uh, 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 small window or uh, or the kernel for the future. Three by three used uh, for that example. And here, so we added some uh, pepper noise and salt noise, white pixels. You can see it's uh, dark pixels there. And here, so we use a uh, uh, Counter harmonic filter and we use uh, Q equals 1.5. Here is Q equals uh, minus 4, 1.5. So we can use different parameters for Q and we can ha have um, those uh, good for paper or good for uh, salt noise. So it's uh, 
the formula is there, but uh, um, they can use they can be used for different noises. It seems that the result for filtering the pepper noise seems to be better than the original one. Am I right? Oh, uh, sometimes, sometimes it looks like better. Yes, yes, sometimes because after filtering. That becomes very smooth. In the original image, possibly there, you have some dots, and those dots actually, after filtering, those dots are those also removed. You can see those are actually not noise, but after filtering, those become smooth. And also, possibly some dots is removed, are removed in the image. The new image looks like smooth, but and may remove, also remove some information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, here's uh, some, uh, some, some filters. If we use wrong parameters, or uh, if we use wrong filters. <coughs> Last time we talk, also talked about some, some other static filters, like, uh, like uh, mean filter or max filter. Mean filter always takes uh, the minimum, minimum value. If we take the minimum value, always we can keep the minimum value and remove the maximum value, mean filter. So if we have a sort noise, mean filter can remove all the sort noise. But if we have paper noise, mean filter always keeps all the paper noise. We can't remove the time, we can just, just uh, keep all of them. And also for the contra harmonic filter, if we use some different parameters for Q, you may have some disaster here. It does not anymore and make just make the, the image worse. And this uh, is good for paper noise, but if we uh, use that for sort noise, you can't remove any sort noise. Okay, this is the same good. 1.5 is good for, uh, for salt noise, uh, for paper noise. Uh, if we have paper noise, it's good. But if we have salt noise, it's, uh, it's not good. It's, uh, okay, uh, it's just uh, um, field, some filters in mathematics. And also we talked about all the statistic filters. We, talk, we, we normally have mean filters, mean and max filters, midpoint filters, and also we can have RF trim filter. Just after sorting, we remove some uh, lowest value and highest values, just keep some values in the middle and, and find the average. So this uh, uh, is a generalization of, uh, of uh, median filter. Uh, what, so what's, what, what, what do you do the alpha trim? Filter. Do you just find the middle that you get the two highest pixel values divided by two? The middle point. Uh, no, so the arbitrary one. This average. Yeah. How do you perform this filter? After sorting, we remove some of the lowest value and the highest values. Well, and then just leave, leave the middle values and the final the average. Okay, so you only consider the, the value in between the minimum and maximum? Yes. And you replace all the pixels with those values. Yes. Do you remember last time we talked about? Uh, okay. Do you, do you remember what lecture it is for other TCP filters? Okay, here. Okay, uh, RF trim filter. RF trim filters. Yeah. RF trim filter. After sorting, we remove the lowest value and highest values 
For this, we remove two values, d is equal to four. If d is four, we remove two values for the lowest two values or highest, and just leave some values in the middle, and then find the mean of the middle values. This is for us to so, so d will always have to be less than the pixel, the, like the, the, the basically the number of pixel values that you can have. Yes, yes. And we know so we remove some values and left some values. If we remove all the values say, on the left, all the values on the right, just leave one value, that's a medium filter. So it's a generalization of medium filter. And if we remove nothing in lowest, nothing in the highest, just find the, all the values uh, uh, for the mean. It's a uh, arithmetic mean filter. So, Alpha treatment filter is a generalization of mean filter and median filter, both. And the mean, I just talked about if we, we remove, re, remove nothing, I just find the mean. And it's the same as the box filter. Okay? Okay, all okay. 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 filters. Half the means is generalization of arithmetic mean and median field. Arithmetic mean is remove nothing, just find the mean in the box field. Median filter is, and also, you know, in, in, in some research papers, they also add some weights to, to that for half the field, mean filter, add some weights. You know, when we remove some highest and lowest values in the middle, we have some values, and also we give some weights to those values. And if they give weights, actually, it's, if we remove nothing, it's not the same as a resident mean. It's not the same. And not the same as the mean, the weighted mean filter, because that weights are related to the position of the, the values after sorting. Mean field, respect mean, or weighted mean, is the weights are related to the positions in the spatial domain. Why is it related to the position after sorting? Why is it related to the position in the spatial domain? So they are not the same. This is the same because all the values, weights, are one. So it's, it does not matter where it is. Okay, here's just examples for uh, for for uh, other static filters. If we just add the uh, sorting type and noise into the image, you can see it's uh, a lot of noise there. And we can use a medium filter if we remove once, remove just once, three by three. We can see most of the uh, sorting type and noise removed. And we can still have some, some points here, so it look like noise. And if we remove twice, remove three times. If we remove more, we can re remove more points. And also, we may have some problems in, uh, if we remove more. And some lines may be disconnected if there are so thin lines. And also, the, uh, around the edges, there may be some, some some uh, artifacts here, so we should be very, very careful about the medium field because it may remove some pixel values. And from this image, you can—I don't know if you can see some uh, some uh, artifacts here. If you, especially if you have very thin lines, it should be uh, you should be very careful about medium field. The other one seems to be amazing. Max filter plus mean filter, all of them together. This is a mean and a ma uh, max filter. You know, so the max filter is good for paper noise. Mean filter is good for sort noise. So these so two together is very nice. This one is just use max filter to remove the paper noise and then apply it to that to remove the uh, sort noise. We there again some problem uh, for missing information? Uh, I don't think so. Yes, sometimes. And uh, mostly we don't just 
apply once max and once uh, mean we just apply meeting for it once meeting for but uh, it depends and uh, you, you know so for sort noise sort noise is white and uh, in the image you may also have real white pixels so it depends would it, would it be better to apply like a bilateral filter to if you want to avoid uh, yes, bilateral filter should be always good. And also some other filters that people are still uh, um, doing some research on. If you read the latest uh, technical paper, you can, you can see some new filters. Also, we, we call that uh, guided filters. Is it still possible to to create to introduce a new filter that can work much better in statistical context? Possibly, it depends on what uh, image you have and what applications. Depends. Anyway, such filters only you know so, uh, the, the the filters are related to the model of the noise. If you have a uh, uh, additive noise, we just talked about the additive noise. Additive noise generally we use mean, mean filters, average mean or, or, or uh, other mean filters. And a certain paper noise, we generally use uh, other filters. Maybe they have both additive and mean. Sometimes. So you know, I've trained the, the filter actually is uh, just a combination or generalization of mean future and the mean future. Okay, uh, for, for noise, uh, uh, in, in this image, we only have the uniform distributed uh, Gaussian white noise, uh, the so uniform distributed white noise. And here, so we also mixed mixed more sort of type of noise into that to generate that. So uh, we can use different methods applied to the images to see the, the results and here so you can see that risk might mean only just spread the uh, the uh, noise into the neighborhood. And geometric means it's it's, it's uh, it's not from good. You can see it's uh, even it's worse. And medium filter should be better than those. Medium filter can always remove noise if it's uh, smooth enough. And also, RF trim means just a generalized version. It depends on what uh, application uh, and can keep some noise uh, and not remove all. Because medium filter <coughs> sometimes can remove uh, the real pixels, what we need. Okay, any questions? Let's have 10 minutes for it. I have put, uh, 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 put all the slides on web now, uh, even for the image coding here. Um, it's for next week's lecture.
I have put all the uh, uh, time slots for the lab uh, demonstration here. And if you can't find your name in the timetable, yeah. please send me email. If your coursework is not assessed, uh, we can only give you zero. And also for the uh, late submission, if you submit your coursework late, uh, the penalty is for 5% uh, per day. Maximum is 25% uh, for the penalty. But uh, this, this cannot be changed by me. It's, uh, the, the penalty is, is applied automatically by the system, not by me. When we mark your coursework, we just give uh, the, coursework, uh, the marks based on the submitted uh, coursework. We, we, we don't apply any penalty to them. This week is the last week for the labs, I think, for the new material to do. Yes, next week is, uh, is, week is uh, nothing actually. It's in nothing it's new, just uh, for the submission and the completion. But will there be demonstrators there uh, next week just to help? Yeah. Demonstration is only uh, in the last two weeks. I mean, will there be TAs there next week? Uh, yes, uh, they will be there. And also, for the uh, coursework assessment, I will be there. Okay. I will do, do those with uh, the uh, demonstrators together. So, are we being marked on just the functions that we write or the whole GUI? Uh, what if a GUI actually, we, we, we may ask you to demonstrate your work and then ask you to demonstrate what and what and ask you to show the program where, if I wish to change what, where to, where to change. Yeah. If the program is done by you, you should be able to find all the program where to change what parameters and where, uh, what function is for what. Sorry? So you just have to, you to explain the code? Uh, not explain everything, but you, you have to ask answer some questions. About the code, right? Yes, about the code. So what if all of our functions were is a very good, but the GUI is rubbish, then what? Uh, you know, for the, for the marking scheme, we, we can see the GUI just uh, takes 2% uh, or something. If you have done all of the uh, very well, uh, you can still uh, get very high marks. Is it okay if we just add like basic functions, like buttons, onto the already existing view and then it provides them? Yes. Does it count as for the 10% thing? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You know, every year we, we can have uh, some very excellent uh, coursework. And uh, every year we've got some students got, uh, uh, some students are given 100 marks, just full marks, a few of them. It's not necessarily to display the regional interest, but you need after uh, the image processing, you should display some images only the regional interest processed. So like other regions. other regions should be okay, the same. So you can like a map transformation and then just do regional. Yes, interest yes, like just in the region. You can manually choose the regional interest by. By, by most, or you can just assign this code. Yeah, because like for some images, it's not. It's like better to have a fixed region because otherwise, if you do random, you might not get part that's actually 
useful to see, like for example, a camera. Yeah, yeah that's fine. So if the functions work well, if the functions work well, and uh, the GUI looks nice, I mean, maybe not sophisticated, but can get full mark. Yes, it should be fine, okay. and uh, and uh, the the marks are also related to to the the questions you answered. Oh yeah, yeah. If, if you answered all the questions yeah, well, yeah. So you definitely can get better. Uh, where it says enhance the program in the menu system, is that just being able to use the GUI to select your filter versus it only working like in the code? Mm -hmm. Is the threshold should be found in the program. Yeah. You can assign assign smaller T zero in the in the iteration you can have a constant value it should be found by the user. Yes, it's a symbol. It's a symbol. Yes, if we use uh, adaptive or, or iterative automatic, we use I use it properly. You just set the fixed uh, value here. Is it the dimension in this file? Actually, mentioned in the in the slides. Here. Right. You only need to set this so T. T zero. You need to set this. You can set it to ten five or zero point five. Mm -hmm. That depends on what uh, you, you you can try. If you set that number bigger, that parameter like one hundred, your iteration may just it's go just uh, several iterations. It would end, but if you set this well, it may go takes long time to to to, to okay. stop. Where does it end? So the, do you need to consider all the values in that small window and then come up with the threshold value and change that each time at the start window? Or do you just have like we just have T zero and just go through the pixel? Yes, all the pixels. If you apply this for regional interest, uh, it's, it should be just. On the same region. Oh, so we don't have to do the entire just the region. Yes. yes.
Okay, let's go on for teaching about noise. And if we have a periodic noise, we can still use the same model. You know, periodic noise is just here. Those noise are, those parameters are uh, periodic. And uh, actually, we can also reduce the periodic noise uh, by removing those. And if we have periodic noise, periodic noise always appear very high uh, energy in the frequency domain. Uh, as we just talked about uh, uh, the periodic noise, always there are some high energy there. Because periodic, periodic in, in the frequency domain, always there are some, uh, some fixed, fixed frequency appear very high. So those fixed frequencies should be at some fixed point. And also, uh, sometimes we may have uh, some, uh, some, uh, some frequencies not just at very, very small point in the air, but also some, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, lines they, they freeze to me. And we can also use design filters to re remove or extract the filter. <coughs> okay, if we remove some uh, some uh, uh, frequencies, we can use filter filter called band reject filter. Band reject filters are for the ideal filter. Just set those frequencies to zero, and other keep the other frequencies. These filters are just like this. Those are ones. Those values are van ones, and those values in the in that band is just zero. So we set that f those frequencies zero, other frequencies keep the same. But this ideal filter, last time we talked about the ideal filter. Ideal in the frequency domain, but not ideal in the spatial domain. Such filters may result some resulting in some uh, some uh, ringing effects. Like ringing in the uh, Last time we have a sh uh, sh shown this. After filtering, we may have uh, some uh, some green effects uh, uh, at the border of some some uh, sharp borders or sharp uh, sharp edges. So to 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 reduce the ringing effects, we can use some Butterworth filter or Gaussian filter. Those filters uh, uh, are also very popularly used in. Uh, and uh, those filters are uh, so not not exactly zero or one, but smoothly changing from zero to one. It's a function. Yes, uh, but then we reject idea of it. And uh, for experiments, if we have an image like this, it's a periodic, we can see some patterns here. And in the Fuchs domain, we can see some very uh, uh, high energy points. Those are noise. And if we just use a band reject filter to remove those frequencies, remove all the energies along the band like this. In the middle, it's one, and also those ones. Along the band, it's zero. Along the band, it's zero. If we use this filter colored onto the image, we can actually have an image. So this is the, the, the uh, image after the, uh, the periodic noise removed. Is it possible only instead of that ring, I mean the bottom was with her, uh, could we only use uh, points. some yeah, certain points? Yes. That, uh, I mean yes. Discrete, so that I, I think at that time the image would be... Yes, made. but you need to find exactly where yes, the yes. point is. If is. you can find it. Do that, um, yes, if you can perform it. You know, but generally, it's, it's, it's around that point, there's still some, some energies around that. Oh, yeah, we can have some, uh, at least some little. Yes, you can, you can use. You know, sometimes we use such, such filter. This is called frequency, re you, you know, frequency reject filter. Just remove some frequencies, not a band. Yeah. Yes, we do. band reject filters. And if we have band reject filters, we just talked about the band reject filter. 
But if we, if we use one minus band region, we can actually have better pass feature. Which is the noise itself. Yes, if we have a, this is a band reject filter. And this ones has zeros there. As those are zeros, those are ones. And you can see those are ones, those are ze uh, zeros. If we use one minus this image, we have those zeros, those ones, and those zeros. It's just let that band pass, it's band pass field. OK, for band pass filter, for this image, if we apply the band, band pass filter, we can have a, the noise pattern. What's the, what's the relationship between, between this image and this image? This is a band pass. They are convoluted together. This is a band reject. They are convoluted together. I mean, no, 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 not no, just addition, simply adding them together. If we add this image to that image, we actually get, can have an image like this. The same, just, this actually is just given models, uh, we, we call that additive noise. This is additive to, to the, the image. Well, uh, sometimes for some uh, electronic devices or, or imaging equipment we may generate some multiplicative noise. Uh, in, in those cases, we need use logarithm function to make it additive. So those those filters you can see is all additive. Okay, this is called a notch filter. Just remove some points. This is just what you, you just talked about. We can use to remove to, uh, points. Notch filter, we call that notch filter. And also for notch filter, you can see it's always symmetric. The central is symmetric, or point symmetric. The center point is the origin. Why? Why you, we use Symmetric filters, two, no, two points for notch field, not just one. This is the, the filters in the frequency domain. If we convert that into spatial domain, centrally symmetric filters can, can be converted into a filter only Real, we don't have the imaginary part. If in the special domain we wish the future is only real future, only real numbers, we have to use a symmetric filter like this. Symmetric means real in the image, in, in the special domain. This is a wonderful property of Fourier transform. Okay. For not filter, we can still have the ideals. It has a ring effect, and we can have a Gaussian filter, we can have Bartwell's filter, and uh, to, to, to remove some frequency points. And if we use notch filter for this example here, how many filters we need? We just, to notch filter to remove a pair of, of the points. If we just use those, we need one, two, three, four. We need four notch filters added together to make a filter, new filter. Okay, this is a notch filter to just remove uh, some some frequencies, and uh, in this example here, we have a uh, uh, the, the the band pass filter. This band pass only let that lines pass; other lines we remove. 
And here, from uh, uh, the frustomy of that image, we can see their very high energy there and there along the x axis of y axis. Are they nodes? Are they nodes? Yes, should be nodes. In, in, in satellite image, always, because the satellite image is uh, generated by scan. And when we scan, the, when the satellite flies from our one place into the other, the, 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 the camera scans the uh, mm -hmm. ground objects. When it scans, you know, the, the atmosphere is different at every position, it changes. So when, when, we, when the satellite moves, the atmosphere has changed, the, 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 the images should be different. The same object may have different reflection or different uh, intensities. Those uh, generate some, some, some uh, uh, artifacts like lines. So it appears some, like some just horizontal lines along the flight direction. So those lines look like this. And this, uh, if we just use band pass, we can extract the noise pattern. And if we use band reject, and those bands reject other bands are kept we can have uh, the uh, noise removed image. Uh, if, if we magnify this image bigger, you can see some details there. Especially here, you can see some lines here. But actually, if we remove those noises, it should be smooth. If there's no storm, hurricane, the water body generally is very smooth. And also forest, some rice paddy or something, uh, some lands, very smooth. So if there are some lines appear in the smooth areas, so it's noise. Actually, for satellite images, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 always noise like this, horizontal lines, some patterns. Those patterns actually coming from uh, the, 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 the uh, changes of the atmosphere. When, when the satellite flies over, Any questions about restoration noise removal? Okay, for for this topic, we only we only learned about how to remove noise, reduce noise. We haven't learned the degradation of the optical system. Uh, you know, in the in the model, in the model, we actually have two things. One is uh, uh, from the, uh, the imaging systems, uh, the sensors, the optical systems, those we have not considered. And also in image processing, if we consider those models, those that can only be uh, removed or reduced. This also the, we call that restoration, but we, uh, I don't teach those. It's, it's, a, it's a bit more complicated and also related to too mathematical, too mathematical. If you wish to learn more about those, you can, you can use a, a textbook or, or uh, some te technical papers. Uh, it's a lot of things. Uh, Any more questions? Okay, if you turn to uh, uh, next topic is about geometric tra transformation. It's also called restoration because uh, when we take images, uh, uh, sometimes there are some, some geometric distortion in images. We wish also wish to correct the distortions. For geometric distortion, we need correct distortion or 
apply some spatial transformations to, to change, change the image geometrically. So after we change the geometric uh, uh, forms or, or geometric uh, 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 conditions of the, uh, some pixels, we may create some new positions or remove some positions. If we create some new positions, we need find where the new positions and what are the intensities at those positions. So we need first special transformation to, to, to rearrange the pixels in the new image. And we need to find the, the, the values, pixel values at all the new positions. Okay, for spatial transformation, spatial transformation is transformed just from uh, uh, one, uh, uh, some, some pixel values, uh, some uh, coordinates, some positions to new positions. If, if this is uh, image x, y, every position x, y is correct, should, should be related to x prime, y prime, then we can find the relationship between them, these the functions relates between them and then map from x, y to x prime, y prime. And we can also should be able to find the inverse transform from x prime, y prime to x, y, such that we can just find the corresponding uh, relationship be between positions, positions only for the coordinates. For example, if we just shrink the image, make the image smaller, originally, Every position is the x, y, but after, sh after shrinking, if we just shrinking as the half size, half size, half, which is half height, the coordinates is uh, divided by two. We know if we coordinate divided two for the, for the even numbers, after, after division, we, we have integer coordinates. But for the odd numbers, odd coordinates, we cannot find those, those coordinates because after shrinking or after geometric transformation, we still have integer coordinates. If we just only keep the integer coordinates, we should remove the fractional coordinates. Or we need to find the, co the intensities for the, all the intensity, uh, integer coordinates. And after that, we may, we may have some half of the pixels missing, and those just removed. But if we wish to magnify it, zoom, zoom, zoom in to make it bigger, we may have to create some new positions. And if we create new positions, I think then we are not able to bring back the lost pixel values. That's right, that's right. If we shrink the image first, we may remove some, half, if we shrink half, half for heights and, uh, and widths, we may remove our, our, our three quarters of the pixel values. Three quarters of pixel values uh, missing. We can't find that back if we zoom that to the original size again. So we have to find the values for those. Or if you have an image, you wish to make it bigger. You have to create some new positions for the image. The new positions you have to create is one thing for for the geometric transforms, another thing to find the intensity values at those situations. So we have two things we need to do. One is to find the coordinates, next to find the intensities. We call both. We call interpolation. We have to interpolate the coordinates. We have to interpolate the intensities. You know, mathematically, mathematically, you can always find half, half of the pixel uh, of the values, or twice the values. But for integer coordinates, it's not always reversible. Not always reversible, because because if we only have integers. Another example is very popularly given in, in, in image processing is for rotation. This example here, if I have a three by three image, 
And uh, if we wish to apply rotation, rotate that by 45 degrees, and we can use a rotation transform here. It's uh, x there's, uh, for rotation. Do you still remember the rotation, rotation formula? Remember the rotation formula. X prime equals to x times cosine theta minus uh, 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 y y times sine theta. Y prime equals to x times sine theta plus cosine y times cosine theta. Okay, this is a rotation transform. Is it on the slides, the previous slides? Yes, yes. And uh, we can also write, rewrite that into a uh, matrix form. Cosine theta minus sine theta and sine theta cosine theta x, y. Okay, this is for rotation. And if we wish to rotate that for 45 degrees, 45, cosine 45 degrees, what's that? Square root 2 over 2. Okay? Cosine 45 degrees is square root 2 over 2. And the sine 45 degrees is square root 2 over 2. That's the same. So if we substitute that into the formula here, we have the rotation formula here. So that coming uh, comes from the, this uh, transformation. Okay. Rotation. OK, if we just apply rotation to the three by three matrix. For the three by three matrix uh, or image, image, we have the coordinates of the original image. It's a zero, zero zeros here. It's a zero one zero two. This is a one zero two zero. Okay, this is one 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 two. This is a two one two two. This is the coordinates. This original coordinates here, and we if we use x, y there applied to the, the uh, rotation transform, and we can have the coordinates there. And after rotation, we found the new positions. And the new coordinates, all the coordinates there. And uh, because for image processing, all the images we have, the coordinates should be only, only integers. So if we just round those numbers into integers, we have the integer coordinates. And if we just use rounding, we have a, this uh, uh, minus square root 2, minus uh, positive square root 2, after rounding, so square root 2 uh, is 1.414. Remember. <laughs> So if we round that number into integer, we can have this, this rounded into, into one. Okay. If we round that into one, we have minus one, one. This is, uh, should be, after all, we have minus one, two. This is zero, three. This is minus one, one. Minus one, one. You can see so we have two minus one, one. Two points. That means we have zero, one, zero, two. Two points, zero, one, zero, two. After rotation, we may have just one point. One point, OK? Okay, we, if we just feel, feel the, the coordinates, zero, zero is here. They keep it the same. But 
This E one zero, a zero one goes there, and one two goes there, zero three goes there, minus one two there. So we have those those pixel values without any problems, coordinates without any problems. But we have some problems there, there, and there. At this position, we have no pixels mapped to two. So we may have a hole. After rotation, we may have a hole. There's no pixel values there. And here, we have two pixel, pixels mapped to one, and p two pixels mapped to just one position. AD, those two pixels map to the one. HI, those two pixels map to that one position. So this is a problem. If we just use rotation or rounding after transformation, rounding, we may have some pixel values missing and some pixel values mapped twice or more. It depends on what transformation we need. And, uh, and this is an example for rotation. For geometric distortions, uh, there is always some, some transformations, very complicated, not just uh, rotation. We may have a fine transform. We may have a translation. We, we, may, have, we may have scaling, scaling, rotation, shearing, a lot of transformations. But every time, when we, after mapping, we may have some pixels missing, some some pixels mapped from uh, multiple uh, pixels. Those are problems. And uh, to solve this problem in, 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 in computer graphics or image processing, we may have some methods. One is just interpolation by the mapping is done by interpolation, um, not just simply round the pixel values. We found after mapping, this is uh, rotated to th that position there, and we may just use uh, interpolation to find the correct positions. This is one thing. Another thing, they don't use rotation directly. They use shear. And, uh, and re researchers from, from researchers from uh, uh, the transformation of such matrix, such matrix may be implemented by a few steps. Those steps, every step should be used to map all the pixel positions to new new positions without any 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 overlapping or any point missing. Those. Uh, just for the shear, use the shear uh, factorization. This is uh, another thing, use a matrix factorization to solve that problem. Okay. Still go back if we, we, we have some missing, some pixel values missing stuff. Uh, if we just use, just use integration, because it's a, uh, this value can be integrated with that, and we have two, two values there. And also, for two pixels, we just keep one there. And after rotation, we may have an a, a, a image like this. We, we, we definitely have some pixel values missing, and uh, some values appear twice. Act Actually, this point can be uh, the, the intensity can be uh, used, uh, uh, can, can be written by linear or some other integration. And the people also use bi-tubic integration, just to use the labor pixels for integration. Okay, uh, you know, so for, for such a things, always there's some, uh, some problems. And also researchers are doing a lot of work to remove, fix the problem by implement uh, uh, the same thing with different methods. Okay, another thing is the magnifying. If we magnify image like this, this is three by three, magnifies twice 
is it just uh, four coordinates? Is it two times that? You know, for two times the whole genome, we have one, two, three, the coordinates. After uh, uh, magnifying, we have one, two, three, four. But if we just multiply two to one, two, three, four, we only have a two, four, six, eight. We don't have a one, three, five. Those, those pixel values. And we can use interpolation. Interpolation we can use for this example here. We use nearest neighbor. We just found the nearest neighbor pixel value and fill that. For this, we just use that pixel value because the new creations we may create three. For every pixel value, we may have, a, have to fill three more pixel values. So we just use the layers neighbor to fill that value. So those values should be the same as that. And uh, those values will be the same as that. So just like this. this is only twice. But sometimes we may have the, the magnifying factors, not just the integer. Sometimes we may have one point, one four. In such cases, that those coordinates possibly is not just mapped to the integer coordinates. In such case, we still use use interpolation to find uh, for all the pixels, all the pixels. Uh, the interpolation can can be used to the uh, nearest neighbor only find the nearest creation pixel value to fill that, and we can also use uh, bilinear. Information by QB. I'm sorry again, uh, same colors, what they represent. What do they show the same colors? They show the same, same values. values. Same values. If this value is 100, those are all 100. Uh -huh, all the same colors and values. So we call the nearest neighbor. And if we wish to use uh, use a linear li linear interpolation, because it's a linear linear in two dimensions. So we call that bilinear. Okay, here, so if I have uh, this A, this is A, this is D, and uh, between them, we should have a linear. Linear is, uh, is uh, D plus A divided by two. It's because it's, uh, the position here, the coordinates is just uh, two position divided by two. But there is two A's, each A. This, because this one we don't have the, the the pixel values outside the border, so just to use the same pixel value. This is a, at the border of the image. So you use the um, border image mean just du duplicate. And uh, this is the first pixel, and here is the borders. And uh, between them is the linear interpolation. Between them we have linear interpolation, and here. We, 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 we can use those, or those, or those four to interpret those still two dimensional linear. So it's a bilinear. If we, you add this uh, pixel value to that divided by two, it's the same. Okay, this is uh, a uh, bilinear interpolation. Actually, we can uh, we, we also have uh, some other interpolation methods: the bilinear, by cubic, by quadric. By quadric is not uh, used very much, but uh, bilinear and uh, by cubic is so very popular to use. Any more questions? Okay. If if it's uh, it's not exactly just magnify twice or, or make it smaller or bigger, if it's uh, you know so in image processing, if I have two cameras put together, this uh, stereo image, two cameras put together and take uh, images. In the image, we may have some some disparity. And between the two images, we may have some pixel values are different. At those positions, and for example, if I just put one object there, in one image, if I put here, I can look 
see this side of the object. In the other image, I can see this side of the image. Not exactly the same. So if we just use the coordinates, we may find in one image the coordinates look like, like this, and these points exactly the same as these points in the other image. So those are corresponding points in two images. And if we found those corresponding points in image process, we call that tie points. That means this point exactly is that one. And uh, for example, if I have one picture here, this one in one image, one point of that position, it should be exactly the same, the, the points in that image. So in, in this image, we have that point, in, that should be exactly the same as that point in the other image. At that point, that is the same, and that point is the same. The other point is the same. So this is a, a tie points or corresponding points. And in image processing, we need to find those corresponding points first, or point pairs. We call that pairs, or tie point pairs. This is a pair. This is a pair. In two images, this is one image, this is the other. And if we found the corresponding points first, and then, because the points are not always exactly exist for all the points, for example, if we have an image of this, we can find the corner points exactly in one image and in the other. But we can't find all the points along there because there's no feature, so we can't know what is exactly what point. For example, here, this line there, those points, how do you know what points is really what points there? You can't tell exactly what points what because they are very similar, because images are very smooth. So we actually, we only found some feature points, corner points, sometimes we use the high curvature points, it depends on what feature you, you use. And then, <coughs> find the corresponding points, these tie, tie points. And after that, the image in that, that patch, we need map all the points into that, or find the, all the corresponding points between the two patches. By using the the, the, the tie points, we can actually interpret in the points inside the patches. And to find the corresponding points between the patches, we use interpolation equations. And for example, this one's bilinear. If we use bilinear interpolation, we just suppose every position in one patch Y image is related to linearly, bilinearly related to the points in that. And if we have some equations like this, and the list here, we can know we need to solve all those unknowns. For, for such a relationship, we, we, we need this eight unknowns. To solve for eight unknowns, we need 80 equations. Linear, linear, at least eight equations. Again, why? Sorry? Why again? Sorry. We have eight unknowns. Okay. Eight unknowns. Those constants we have to find. We don't know the constant to map all the x, y to x prime, y prime. We wish to find the relationship between them. Okay. We can have some feature points, but um, in, inside the patches, if we have the mesh, Inside the patches, we still need to find the corresponding points. For the corresponding points, we can use some such equations, the bilinear equation, to find the corresponding relationship between the coordinates. To find the relationship, we need to find the unknowns, eight unknowns. To find the eight unknowns, we need eight equations. To find the eight equations, to find the eight equations, we need four points, corresponding points. So if we have four co corresponding points, we can definitely find the eight unknowns. 
So that's why in image processing, we always use such codes as the meshes to find the corresponding codes. And so new, new form cameras like a new iPhones or new Samsung other phones, they have two cameras. But they also use the same technique, or do they use something advanced? Uh, actually, if they, you, you know, if it's, they, they have found a lot of corresponding points, not just four, if they can find more, for example, 100, 200 points, and they can use mesh to find the relationship between the points, the edges and build the mesh and use the mesh for mapping. For that mapping, the animals may be easy to, to solve. And the, the equation should be well conditioned. Because eight animals, eight equations, sometimes it's ill conditioned. If we have more points, we can have, have the Equations will accomplish. It's, a, it's a, just a mathematics. Any more questions? Okay. What we, what we have uh, got uh, uh, the, the unknowns. Yeah, okay, here you can see it's, uh, this is x, uh, x uh, 0, y 0 is mapped to x 0 prime, y 0 prime. This is just a one pair of the uh, coordinates. And we can use such things for every, if we can find the, all the uh, eight unknowns, then we can use that for all the mapping. And if we, every x, y, if we can find the unknowns, every x, y, we can find x prime. Y prime and the map to the new positions of all the points inside. And uh, after that, we still need to fill uh, the the intensities because when we have found the uh, the uh, positions, it was, uh, this are four uh, uh, co uh, coordinates and the four coordinates there for the uh, the, the other. And after mapping, it's, uh, these positions are not necessarily at the integer coordinates. If they are not at the integer coordinates, the intensities actually we can use still use some uh, bilinear interpolations to find the coordinates at the integer coordinates. This is the intensity here. After mapping, it's here. And if we wish to find the intensity there, we can use the nearest neighbor, just to find this nearest position, the intensities to use that. And we can also use uh, the, the bilinear interpolation for, for the, uh, the, the intensities. OK, for geometric correction, we, we, we just talked about interpolation for two things. One is to find the coordinates bilinear. We talked about equation. And another, the other is by linear interpolation for intensities. If we have uh, the intensities uh, at here after mapping, but we, if we wish to find for all the integer coordinates, we still use uh, by linear interpolation for the intensities. OK, in interpolation for coordinates and interpolation for, for intensities. And if we find the intensities here, uh, the, the, the coordinates corresponding points here. This is the original image, and we can find the corresponding points there, and here's uh, distorted points. And uh, we first uh, to interpolate for all the coordinates, because here's only some small number of coordinates. But we wish to find for all the coordinates, and we can use bilinear, and uh, also uh, uh, use uh, Bilinear for it's a for 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 near it's a use nearest neighbor and it's a nearest neighbor is a, uh, uh, bilinear and this is a map to to that mesh is a mesh 
And for image processing, sometimes so we, we just map from one image to other. And in the first lecture, we talked about a uh, map from a, from a cat to tiger. Remember the changing between two images, the final images between a cat and a tiger. Those changes, just like this, find the mesh corresponding points first and then back from one to the other. This is to use uh, layers later. Here is to uh, use uh, uh, bilinear image, different image method. And we can see some difference there, this some uh, some uh, some uh, just some 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 difference along the border. Still this is uh, uh, just a map back, restored uh, from distorted back to the original mesh. We can see still some problem here. And this example here is uh, the original image. It's actually it's, uh, just told it possibly it's just change the camera position, possibly it's just a, uh, a wind blow that or change the position of that uh, um, object there. And we have another image. If we have two images, we can find the corresponding points. If we just find the difference, this is the difference we know so there is something changed, there is something different between the two images. And if we wish to to uh, to to uh, uh, find the, the the positions for new, the original positions of this new image, we can use the restored image like this. You know, one of the very important applications for this the geometric distortion is for uh, land use monitoring. What? Land use monitoring. One. by using satellite image. We take one image this year, and the next year, about the similar time, for example, this year, I take one picture in June. Next year, I still take one more image in June. And then, finally, because the two images taken by satellite, satellites should not be at the same position. One image taken here, the other taken there. So if we have the same error, we should find the corresponding points first and then ma match all of them and then apply the geometric distortion to correct one of them to map to the original positions. Just register the two images. This is also called the registration in image processing. After registration, we can use one image minus the other to find the difference. If you have built a uh, a, a house in your rear garden without uh, approval, the council will found very easy to find this land is not used properly. This uh, is one of the, uh, the, the applications in image processing. Okay, this is uh, for geometric distortion. Any questions about this? This is also called restoration. We have talked about two topics. One is the restoration to remove or reduce noise. The other topic is the restoration for the geometric distortion. No questions? See you next week.